What's up guys, Sand Legend here, back again with another One Piece Treasure Cruise video, and in today's video, we're going to be going over some teams for the upcoming Kazuna Clash versus Albert. Um, now do note that this is another super boss, so after this video is uploaded, I will be uploading another video talking about the team for super boss. But right now, we're just talking about the 10 star difficulty, we have free play teams, and we have accessible teams. Now this is a pretty, uh, pretty uh, the different thing that I do uh, for these teams here. Usually I do pay to win teams, which involves me using probably some of the new units to make my teams and everything. Uh, but in this case here, I know a lot of people probably don't have the new legends. So all the accessible teams, if they're not the friend captain, they're not going to be on a team. So I'm not going to be using like um, the new Yamato as my captain and have Roger Odin be the friend captain. Basically, we're going to use the new legends as the friend captain and then everything else is going to be probably something you have in your box or probably some replacements you can ha you can find in your box. So hopefully that does help out a lot of other players and everything. Um, so without any further ado, let's get started. Starting off, we're going to be looking at the quick variation where Strikers, Cerebral, and Free Spirit get the cooldown here. On stage 2, we have to deal with 5 turns of attack down, 2 turns of increased damage taken, and 2 turns of damage threshold. Now, when you defeat the boss here, you will be hit with a 150k hit of damage, which will definitely kill most teams, unless you have a way to, um, to, to mitigate that damage for your team. Stage 3, we do have the enemy being immune to everything except for defense down. We have stun to our left column, which is really annoying there. We we have our slots changed to unfavorable slots, but it looks like that they don't change tandem slots. So if you have tandem slots on your crew, then I assume they don't get changed because on the guide they have on the social media, they have a list of slots that will get changed and tandem is not one of them. So. I'm assuming here that if you have tandem slots, they don't get changed into unfavorable slots. So you can take, you can like use that to your advantage there. Uh, we have five turns of damage reduction as well, alongside the fact that we have an interrupt for slot changing. Um, if you change your slots at all, you just get what the preemptive says. You get changed, you get your slots changed back into unfavorable, except for tandem slots. Um, after level 31, we do get hit with seven turns of despair and six turns of defense up. So, looking at this free to play team here, we do have Gear 5 and the 5 plus Kazuna Clash Roger. Stage 2, we have the 5 plus Brook being able to give us the attack down removal as well as, as, well as the um, potential of having a base attack boost on the next turn because we have a special word, so you have like the, um, the perfect buff and everything. So if you hit your perfects, you get a base attack boost on the next turn. If not, you have Roger there, so it's fine. Um, 5 plus Roger is also going to be able to give us a uh, an attack boost for a super class special. Um, we have the 56 Zoro being able to give us the damage threshold removal as well as the orb boost. And then for the 150k hit, we do have the captain ability of the gear 5 being able to revive us um, and you know activate his gear 5 abilities. If for some reason you survive the hit and have gear 5 still, um, you can just use his EX Super on the next stage. Speaking of the next stage, we have the uh, the new gate being able to give us the stun removal by cutting our HP in half. Uh, we have Chain Mountery as well in his, in his kit. Gear 5 is going to be able to give us the Orb Boost and the Color Fairy Boost. Now he will change our slots, but that's not going to be that big of a deal because of the fact that um, the Interrupt, it does give us unfavorable slots, but with Roger as a captain, he is able to make um, strength, dex, and quick slot beneficial for free spirit and slasher characters. So basically it's everyone on the crew here, um, except for obviously gear 5 and uh, the Zora because they'll get imp slots. But the fact that this is a quick boss, doesn't really matter if they have a maxi slot or not. Um, because you're mainly focusing in on using the dex units to do your damage there. So it's not going to matter too much that they have unfavorable slots. Uh, Roger is also going to be able to use his double special to give us the defense up removal uh, for the stage here and the T the TM yeah TM Luffy and Ace are going to be able to give us the attack boost as well as the despair removal um, on on this team as well as the fact that they have the Uta support um, which gives us a, a very slight chain boost uh, but it's still gonna you know, it's, it's still gonna give us some more damage output here. Uh, so this team does pretty well at getting around all the gimmicks and giving out enough damage for uh, this variation here. 
for the next team here, we do have the accessible team for the quick variation being the versus Kaido alongside the 6 plus kid. Now on stage 2, we do have the Kazuna Clash rare recruit Crocodile being able to give us the attack that removal. Um, and the 6 plus kid is pretty interesting here. He's able to give us the damage threshold removal as well. Um, if you have him a super evolved and everything. Um, the Sasaki is also really good here because it's able to reduce damage uh, by 90%. So we should be able to just tank that hit. Um, and with the, with, even with the, um, the increased damage taken, the kid in his uh, limerick abilities is able to, um, his potential ability anyway, he's able to actually just remove that debuff completely. So we're actually good on, the, on taking that hit with the Sasaki damage reduction there. Now on stage 3, we do have the new King special once again, being able to cut our HP, which removes the stun for us, which is really good. Uh, he also gives us the chain boundary, like I said earlier. Versus Kaido is going to be able to reduce all of our cooldowns again, so we can use all our specials, well, at least two of them, uh, on this turn again. Um, and it also gives us the attack and orb boost. Now, you can either activate Sasaki or Kid, it doesn't matter here. Um, but I'd probably say go with Sasaki because he does give you the 1000 maze attack boost for your crew. And for the kid, if you have a way to insert a, uh, a character there in that open slot to give us um, some kind of way to activate his uh, super type to get bomb slots, that would be great. Or you can have someone there to just uh, remove the damage reduction on the crew or on the enemy side anyway. Um, either one is fine. Um, I think it'd be more fun to just have the kid do it for your, for you know for the crew and everything, but that's just me. Uh, we also have the Croc once again use his special to um, to remove the um, to remove the defense up or the in the despair and also give us a color theory boost. And I'm talking now, realizing that's three specials, so we're probably gonna have to like. Well, the thing the, the thing is is that the the, uh, the white beard I'm pretty sure has the uh, ability of removing stun on himself. So you actually can move him over to the left side there and have another unit on the right side and use their special if you bring someone for damage reduction, use their special to reduce damage reduction or like I said, just put someone there that's going to activate kids super type and just get rid of it that way. Either way it's fine, um, just as long as you know, you're able to you know beat the content, it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you can do it. Moving on to the next variation here, we do have the Strength variation. Uh, strength, Dex, and Quick are going to be getting the cooldown here. On stage 2, we do have to deal with 9 turns of bind to the captains, which is really terrible. Uh, 5 turns of our type slots being unfavorable, alongside getting strength slots uh, for everyone on the crew here. And then 2 turns of resilience, so um, that's going to be pretty good to deal with there. Stage 3 we have immunity except for defense up or defense down and IDT and this is kind of weird I don't know how they meant to word it but I, I, this is how I'm attributing the guide that they put out in their social media here if you're above 50% uh, the debuffs you get or the buffs you gotta deal with are uh, 6 turns of defense up 13 turns of despair and you have intimidation for over boost by reducing the number of turns they have by one turn and if you're below 50% then you don't get the despair looks like um, if you do it doesn't matter too much as you can see we have Roger Odin there so it's not gonna matter um, and then you get the interrupt uh, for defense down um, if you inflict defense down at all they're gonna remove your, your effects and values again doesn't matter at all we have Roger Odin for that so it doesn't matter which one is right or like if this is right at all if these are the gimmicks this team and the next team are gonna be able to handle it perfectly uh, and after level 31 for both um, HP preemptives and everything, you get 7 turn defense up, you get intimidation that includes a conditional boost, so it's going to be for orb boost and conditional boost, and you get 2 turns of assault bind. Um, so like I said, if the guide isn't right on how those debuffs and buffs come about, and you just get them in general, this team and the next team are, are going to be able to beat it. So stage 2, or talking about the team first we have roger odin and we have the pka whitebeard as our captain here stage two we have the roger this is the pka roger now um the first one that came out uh roger is going to use his triple special to actually remove the bind for us and we have the brook special being able to give us the in the turn damage to get around the resilience there and also give us a conditional boost and defense down for the enemy so we should be able to comfortably beat that stage um, stage 3, we have the Roger Odin uh, giving us the EX Super 
and then they're special because with that you get their um, you get their good parts of their specials and everything. Um, you get the attack and orb boost. Now for the orb boost, if you do enough damage in the previous turn, then you get the three turn orb boost, which can get around the intimidation. But if not, then it gets removed obviously, and you can just use like like in this in this guide here the Kamazo for the orb boost because he does give you a two turn orb boost, which does you know get it around the intimidation. Um, so either one is fine. The new gate is going to be able to give you the chain boundary and the Ashra Doge is going to be able to give you the defense reduction and the conditional boost. Now, like I said, the conditional boost is not going to matter too much for the intimidation or the um, or the interrupt. Sorry, the, in the interrupt because we have Roger Odin being able to counteract remove effects and values. Now, for the the second stage, I didn't I didn't mention this already. Um, the strength slots. Uh, fortunately for us, strength slots under Roger Odin get turned into mono slots, so we don't have to worry about the strength slots whatsoever at all. We don't have to worry about type slots actually, uh, because they're able to give us mono slots on all accounts um, with their captain ability and their special and um, EX super. So we're re really good on slots and everything. So this team should be able to sort of comfortably beat the stage. It's kind of tight on damage on the stage two. But, I mean, if it doesn't work out, probably going to have to have some alternatives, obviously. But this team should be able to get rid of or deal with that stage. Okay, so this next team here took a very long time to actually come up with because it just, a lot of the teams I had planned out were not working. Uh, but this is what I settled on here. We have Roger Odin once again alongside Shanks crew. So stage two, we have Eva Rebecca being able to give us the bind removal as well as giving us the attack and or boost for Cerebral and Striker characters, which everyone on this team, I think except for the Law and Robin are, I think everyone is Cerebral Striker. I wanted to, I wanted to say they're Free Spirit and Slasher, but they're probably sla uh, Cerebral Slasher, so either way it doesn't matter too much. Um, we also have 6 plus strength screw being able to give us the chain lock and this right here should be able to enable us to have enough damage for the next stage um, so that we can get the 3 turn orb boost from Roger Odin but if not we have Kurosaki being able to give us the 2 turn orb boost uh, from her special now basically if you don't if you have the Roger Odin orb boost do not activate Kurosaki at all you don't have to use her whatsoever at all um, it, but if not then obviously use Kurosaki there we have Law Robin being able to give us a color affinity boost, or you can use the Onami special to give us a color affinity boost, as well as give us the Festa Down conditional. And again, Watch Odin can deal with the remove effects and values thing, so that's not going to matter too, too much. Um, so if you have Law Robin and don't have Onami, it's fine. If you have Onami and don't have Law Robin, that's also fine. Um, another alternative units, uh, other alternative units you can use are the Okiku units. So specifically the Kalo, the Coliseum Akiku, uh, they can replace the Kurosaki by giving the team a two turn orb boost. They can also replace the, the Law Robin or the Onami, uh, giving us um, the, the rare quick, quick Okiku from the, uh, from the Kurosaki match actually, uh, giving us color affinity as well as having double special activation for bind. So you actually can use them to remove bind if you so need it. Um, if you have some other team build in mind and you don't know what other unit you can use for buying, that's the unit you can use. Um, but if you do have some of these units here, probably go with this team here. This is the one I'm thinking of making work and everything, so hopefully this team does work out. And now for the final variation, looking at the dex variation, another variation that took me quite a while to get through making the teams for. So, starting off, we have Strikers, Shooters, and Powerhouse characters now getting the cooldown. Stage 2, our health gets cut by 95%, which is a very significant chunk of health. We're basically surviving off a very minuscule amount of health, so watch out for the fact that we have also burn on that stage as well, alongside damage reduction for 5 turns. Stage 3, we, the enemy is immune to everything except for defense down. We have a 5 turn chain attack down if your chain is below a 3.5, which does really suck. 5 turn resilience. 5 turn chain down and 5 turn damage threshold. Now we have another interrupt here where conditional boost removes your effects and values. Again, you can see who we have on screen. It's not going to matter too much. Uh, after level 31, the resilience and the threshold get up to 6 turns and they also tack on 5 turns of our slot multipliers changing um, uh, for type slots. So 
even if they're matching, they're going to be counted as a 0.5 times multiplier. So obviously don't use type slots for this stage here. Looking at our team, we have Raja Odin once again, alongside the 5 plus uh, Pika A Whitebeard. Stage 2, we're going to use that Whitebeard to remove the burn for us, as well as give us a chain mount for 3 turns, I want to say. As well as inflicting IDT to the enemy, so we are able to do a lot more damage on that stage. We also have this very obscure unit here, being the Neo Virgo. Now, I know a lot of people do not have this unit. Um, but there are several other units you can use in place of him. I just found him to be the perfect fit for the team because he is able to remove damage reduction on our on the on the enemy there and also give our striker characters an attack boost, which is only like three or four units here. But it, I mean, that's still a lot of damage there. Um, so if you do have a replacement for that Virgo, I definitely would go with that because this Virgo, not really a lot of people, not a lot of people have this unit at all because Neo Clashes haven't been around for quite a while. Um, stage 3, we have Raja Odin, all our stuff, giving them the a EX Super, and especially with giving us the attack, orb, base attack boost, and the water slots. We have Rebecca Special, being able to give us a chain boost on top of you know, the chain battery, so we should be able to get past that 3.5 uh, chain down thing. Uh, we have the Luchi Special, being able to give us a code of reading boost for our strength characters, and Ashura Doji being able to remove Threshold. Uh, for us and also being able to give us the conditional boost um, but like I said for the interrupt it's not going to matter too much because we have Raja Odin being able to counteract that specific uh, effect. And now for the final team in the video and the one I had the most trouble with uh, being this accessible dex team. So uh, looking at this we have the New Year's Nami alongside the Kazuna Clash X Drake Legend. Um, stage 2, we have the Queen being able to give us the damage reduction removal alongside a slot locking uh, for the for the turn and everything so we can carry those slots into the next stage. We have the New Game Special once again, you know, chain boundary, burn, all that stuff. Now, for the slots and everything, uh, we have the super swap of the cat dog here. Now you want to be on um, you want to be on the, the uh, cat viper because he is a striker unit and powerhouse, so he will be getting the cooldown here. Um, and so you swap into Dogstorm to get the full board of matching slots and also an orb boost for them um, So you can comfortably deal with stage 2 And then on stage 3 we have the extra special being able to give us the attack boost And the reason we have Nami over here is because her special and super class special deal with a lot on stage 3 So for her special she does get rid of resilience and she does give us a chain boost, which is really, really good getting around the attack, that chain attack down debuff. And her super class special gets rid of at least five turns of threshold. And with that, all we need is just one more turn removed for the 1131 gimmicks. And that's how we have the Otoko unit on the cat dog there. Um, I, I really had a very hard time trying to find units you know, to get rid of the defensive effects on this variation in general. Uh, because a lot of them just didn't work cohesively in my, like, when I try to build and everything. They just weren't working for me. Pretty sure someone out there has a way better optimized team than this one right here. But this is what I come up with, so I'm just, that's why I'm showcasing you guys. But that Otoko does remove at least one turn of threshold when you enter the final stage. So, obviously, this is a really good for the way this team is built in particular. Uh, we do have... Uh, also, the fact that Nami does give you the paralysis condition boost and everything, and it does bypass interrupts, so it's really good getting some extra damage output there. We have Heracles being able to give us the orb boost for our characters, and then Cat Dog giving us Cold Infinity, and so this team should be doing lots and lots of damage because we have a bunch of good multipliers here, alongside getting a conditional boost that isn't going to activate interrupts and everything. So hopefully, this team does work out pretty well. And that's really it for today's video. Like I said, we're going to go over the Super Boss in the next video, so hopefully you stay tuned for that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe. It really does help the channel out, and I will see you guys in the next video.